Dallas, congrats on high heat. You know, you're looking sharp in the movie. You've got this nice suit on. What did you like about playing this villain? Because uh, he kind of has like a smooth element to him. Anytime I do any kind of a, a part, I always go into the backstory. Like, who is this person? You know, like he's a piece of me, obviously. But how did he end up in this spot? So it's really fun, you know, creating that backstory and who who this person is, you know, which again, it's a piece of me, but who, what's my relationship like my, with my son, which is really a lot of funny stuff that goes back and forth because, you know, he's a screw up, but, you know, he's my kid, you know, and there are times where some of my daughters have done stuff where I just go like, oh my God, but that's my kid. <laughs> you know, so you breathe a little bit on it and then you kind of try to laugh about it. Uh, and in this, you know, preparing for this role, you know, if I was a gangster and I knew guys, I grew up with guys, you know, who were good friends of mine who became gangsters. So it wasn't like I, I'm from Jersey. So it wasn't like I wasn't around it. So I didn't, I knew people who were a part of the business. So uh, that's the whole attitude I took with this guy. And don't take yourself too seriously. And then what I loved about the director, Zach, you know, Tyler, you said you, you'd grown up watching me, you know, so many of the, the kids who were anywhere from five, six, seven years old are now 35, 36, 37 years old, but it goes all up to, we had, I had huge fans that were growing up in their twenties to me. So everybody's between like 35 and 55 are all in power now. You know, so it's like me playing this role is they've gotten to watch me grow up as a kid and then they see what I'm doing with this. It's uh, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, there's there's some really great comedy in the film. I wasn't expecting it to be so funny. And you, you mentioned, you know, just the relationship with your on screen son in this movie is just so funny. How was it working off him and, you know, getting to, you know, dig into him for being a, a screw up, like you said? Oh, my God. He, you know, first of all, he was a super sweet guy. And he was like, I said, well, bro, this, I'm just going to play this straight, like how I would react in this scenario. And he's like, dude, I love it. Just come with it. And so he, he enjoyed the banter that was that. And he could, if you, there's a couple really serious moments in that car where he's really mad. And you, and you, and a lot of guys had that kind of real relationship with their old man where they feel like they can never do anything right, you know? And uh, I thought Mick, you know, as the character really, you know, played that well. It was, I mean, it was funny. Like, I love the first scene of you're just being getting the massage and, and how I react during that massage, you know, getting to, you know, being the problem. And the guy who I thought did an unbelievable job too was the guy who was the masseuse who played Gary. Like Gary was, you know, I, I just I just loved how everybody had fun with their role. Yeah, definitely. It shows in the film and you get some screen time with Don Johnson, you know, such a uh, legend. How was he as a scene partner? Amazing. And I got to be honest, I was, you know, it's Don Johnson and I've never really been intimidated, you know, and I got in my head in the beginning, but we were just running lines. I didn't have the script because I knew every, I knew my lines, I knew everything, but I was blanking. And at some point he just goes, Hey, you got this. And he gave me a hug and I fucking hit it. And then when we got in front of that, I'm a red light guy. Like you put a red light on me, like so right now, I go. You know what I mean? I'm going to deliver the goods. And when we hit that scene, he looked at me, he goes, that was excellent. You know, <laughs> like he was super cool, man. He was, you know, I, I look at all the work that he did. He did all of that work in three days. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, everything was shot around Don and it was amazing to watch him like being the professional that he is like who had a better run in the eighties than him, nobody. But then it looked like, you know, a lot of big stars, eventually they start to, you know, you don't see him as much and they get typecast. And then he comes back with the Watchmen, and, you know, for knives out and all those other flicks he did. 
I mean, this guy's a big, he's, he's still a huge movie star at 73. And he, yeah, looked, he looked, pheno- he looked phenomenal, phenomenal. He, he does uh, just incredible longevity, like you've said. And, you know, this was an interesting role for you because I feel like a lot of the times when they have a, you know, like a former pro wrestler in there, they kind of throw in fight scenes just to have them, you know, Right, like right, right. have you do a diamond cutter for no reason but uh here you know this wasn't really like a super fight filled role for you how was it you know was it nice just knowing like you got this for being you know a talented actor and not just you know your wrestling past absolutely bro because it, you know to me i'm done with that the fight scene i'll do some once in a blue moon but i don't you know i'm done with that i'm gonna be you know like don you know i'm gonna be 67 in a couple of months and it's all about how i hold back the hands of time jordan levine you know i always tell people you know it's not always about who you know or who knows you it's about who's willing to say they know you Who's willing to pick up the call and make a phone for you, a phone call for you? Or, you know, that's what happened in this scenario. Jordan Levine, who is the executive producer, along with Jesse, his partner, those guys knew me from back in LA 15 years ago. And they he, they had said they my name comes up all the time from different parts, but this one is like, we gotta have DDP for this one. And to me, that was, you know, I didn't have to audition, have to do anything because they knew I could mail it. You know, and just to be able to play the more relaxed version. And I gave Zach because he wanted me to give the director. He wanted me to give him, you know, different takes and different, you know, different ways the guy would react. I loved his choices that he used because less is more when you're six foot four, 230 pounds. You know, less is more. And he, and, and the cuts, because I got to see it. And I was like, I, I, it's hard for me to watch my own stuff. If I don't think it's at least good, I'll never watch it again. But I watched this a couple of times, so I know it was at least good. <laughs> you know? Awesome, awesome. And, uh, you know, speaking of, like, fight scenes in the past, um, I talked to your Devil's Rejects co-star, uh, Bill Mosley, and he told me this great story about how you kicked him in one scene, and he said, ow, and then they brought in, like, padding for him, so you kicked harder, and he was like, it hurt so much worse the second time with the padding. <laughs> Uh, you know, do you remember doing those kinds of action scenes there? And what's your memories oh, from that? Oh my God, I love Bill Mosley. <laughs> you know that film when I was filming the scene, which became a montage in the bedroom. I loved what I did with that, and Rob didn't use it. And I said to him, "I go, Rob, I go, why? Why didn't you use that spot? I go, did, did it not come off right?" He goes, "No, it was amazing." but you were too funny. Like you were funny. And we we got a lot of guys doing a lot of funny things. I wanted someone who was a straight ass badass. And that's what I decided to use. So then I understood it. Uh, with, with Sid, you know, who was looked like a huge killer, but very fragile at that time. Between him and Bill, I think I was spending too much time be taking care of Sid because I loved him so much. And Bill, you know, he might end up on the stiff side of a kick or two. But uh, what a great character that friggin' uh, Bill Mosley's character in Devil's Rejects like totally unforgettable. Like Otis is is a, a to me, Devil's Rejects is the um what did, I, what did I equate it to? Uh, Tarantino movie, the the Reservoir of Dogs of Horror. Yeah, I could definitely see that. That's a great movie. And, and speaking of like deleted scenes, I saw this hilarious outtake from a uh, Rat Race where you're throwing around Cuba Gooding Jr. I thought that was so funny. Do you remember uh, filming that? I love. First of all, Cuba was amazing, but the whole idea was my idea about the trundle bed pulling it down and they're in the bed together you know for anybody who's watching in rat race he's racing to get you know to the destination and you see he's lost his clothes so he's he sees this house going down the road and he starts running after the house gets in the house and there's it's a bedroom and there's boxes in the house is moving like this 
And at some point, he's putting on a pair of pants when the house hits a bump and he's jumping and it wakes Kimberly up, my wife at the time, who's wearing a necklace, he pops up and screams. Oh, of course, you know, freaking Cuba screams. Kimberly, I hit the door, he's Cuban in the ass. He flies, goes in the Murphy bed and up into the wall. And I pulled the wall down or the bed down, the uh, Murphy bed, and they're it wrapped up in each other. Oh, God, different level of funny. You, you, and Cuba sold it unbelievably. And of course, I beat the hell out of him in that, in that spot. And that was why it didn't get used because when they showed that, when they showed that scene, people didn't like seeing Cuba get his get his ass beat. And that's why they ended up not using it because the scene was amazing. And I actually got a letter from the director. I can't remember his name right now, but he told me, you know, that he, um, uh, he told me that uh, he was bummed out, <laughs> you know, because he loved that scene and it cost a lot of money to shoot that. Um, so uh, it was it was really funny. If anybody's never seen it, go to and now that you said that, I'm going to actually pull that up and put it up on my page, because <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great it's such a great spot. Sorry, the camera's moving around there. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't believe it wasn't used, but that, that makes sense now that you said that. And you know, you're staying busy. You're you're great speaker, DDP yoga, and all your other ventures. But what's your actor acting future kind of look like? I know you have some upcoming roles lined up and some in post production. Um, you know, uh, right now, uh, I what I've been working on is one of my own projects. You know, if anybody has ever seen the resurrection of Jake the Snake, which was we did that in 2014, we released that, uh, and that's a documentary that's, you know, a lot of power to it. Uh, recently, I've been approached about making that a movie which, you know, a scripted movie that will, um, you know, that'll end up on the big screen and they love the story. So uh, that's something I'm super excited about. Another show that we started filming and it's a docu-series and it's called Change or Die. And we bring five people into the same house where we shot. Did you ever see Tyler, The Resurrection of Jake the Snake? Yes, fantastic documentary. Yeah, phenomenal. So that same house, I had six bedrooms and I kept that house. Uh, I don't live there anymore, but I kept it. And um, I brought five people in to change or die. And our results are off the chain. See, we're not a normal production company. Um, like we do DDP yoga. And if anybody wants to know more about DDP yoga, it's kind of yoga for people who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga. But it's 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 got my flair on it, which changes everything. But it's it's not just workouts; it's you know cooking shows and teaching people how to eat real food because most people have no idea. Uh, and then it's all this inspirational stuff, like you said, inspirational speaker. I do I do it all the time for big corporations, kids, for you know stuff on my Facebook site. There's always something up there. So keep people in check and accountable. And so change or die was taking five people and bring them into the house and over a four month period we filmed them at the end of the four months was it about weight loss kind of but not completely was it about helping people who are beaten and broken up and broken down kind of but not completely was it teaching people how to eat real food kind of but not really what it is is about this the six inch piece of real estate in between your ears. It's about that story you tell yourself. It's about that inner voice and helping you make better decisions. And the results were unbelievable, but because we're a full blown production company, we kept filming after the filming was done. And do you remember Butterbean? Yeah. Yeah. The box, the boxer, uh, so bad that he was walking around like this, like could not get past there. Couldn't do this. His back, his hips, everything were super bad. And they wouldn't operate on him until he got under 300, but he had been under 300 since he was in eighth grade. So that challenge was with him and trying to heal him. And you, when you see where he's at today, it blow your mind. Uh, another person was 
Marcus Buff Bagwell. And his dealing was with addiction and, you know, being overweight, but the weight wasn't anything that was getting him out to eat real food and getting him to change that story because he didn't think he was an addict. And the stuff that we have is unbelievable. And where Marcus is today is unbelievable. It's like, it's kind of like happened with Jake. And then there's three people that there's regular people, you know, that came in two women and a young kid who is the heartbeat. His name is Tyler, uh, um, Taylor. His name is Taylor uh, Sowers. And Taylor, this is a crazy story. I'm about to fill the last spot because there's five bedrooms and one of, for one of my trainers to be in there when I can't be there. And a buddy of mine sends me, he used to work with TMZ, he sends me a text with a picture of this kid. And he says, I want to buy a year on your app. I want to give it to this kid. I'm following TikTok. He's really trying to lose weight. Will you send me a 30 second inspirational thing that he can do it? And I pick up the phone and I call him. I'm like, Jared, do you know this kid? He's like, I don't know him. I'm just following. Me and my brother are going to split it. We want to want to give him your app. I said, I think I might have something better. Get his phone number. So he got his phone number, gave it to one of my producers who works for me, Nadia. Nadia interviewed him. She calls me up and she said, Dallas, we have to have this kid. I said, okay, bring him in. He's number five. So he gets there. He thinks he's 466 pounds because of the scale that he has at home. And when you look up and down, when you're looking to look at the scale and you're over 400 pounds, the needle does this back and forth. So you really don't get a true rating. But he really believed he was 466. He felt he was losing weight. He felt better. And then uh, he's looking down at the scale because when everybody comes in, we weigh them, measure them, and you know, get, went through the whole you know, lineup for what we need for later on in the show. And he's looking down. He goes, stop looking down. The scale's going to talk to you. He goes, it's what? I go, it's going to talk to you. I said, just stand there. And then it says 513 pounds. And he just broke down and started crying. And I was like, bro, bro, look at it this way. It's not 583 pounds. So this is the beginning. This is it. I go, it's going to change. And his transformation was unbelievable over a four-month period. But remember, I told you, we keep filming. And as we keep filming and following, we realize that he is a, you know, a food addict. And if you're in any kind of addiction issues, you lie, you steal, you cheat. It just it's, goes with every addiction. I know I've been around enough of my entire life. And he needed to do stuff on his own rehab as well as Marcus and the results that have come out of it. Like these stories we have are unbelievable. Yeah, that, that sounds incredible. And uh, my buddy, Ken, um, he swears by your yoga. So uh, you're, you really are impacting lives for the better. And it's, it's great to see you, you know, doing this work. And I, I can't wait to see, you know, the Jake project get turned into a film. That's going to be amazing. Thank you so much for your time today, Dallas. Uh, it's my pleasure, buddy. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you getting the word about guys. Uh, High heat will be out there this week coming up. So please go check it out and uh, go to my Facebook diamond Dallas page uh, athlete page and let me know what you thought.